Hello everyone, welcome back to CoinCast. Today we're here with really special guests, Al Gatto, Rocket Man, Silent Bob, and myself, Will Hunting. So, I think the question in everybody's mind is, how far will crypto go down? Uh, let's hear from Rocket Man. Yeah, so, I personally, um invested when the market was high um some of the coins at the all-time high so now they're going down what is the best approach well the best approach is to short you know in, in that situation right i mean that's that's the that it's it's look you know we have the the old uh expression right the, the trend is your friend, you know, but the, the most obvious answer is normally the answer, which is why we say it automatic. So it's going to sound very, very elementary because it is. Normally when the market drops, it's just more sellers than buyers. And we tend to do that. So it just depends on like what you take your cues from. So what we try to do with, you know, Canal is to take some of the emotion or discretion out of that decision. And you're going to get some of these tendencies that are going to have momentum. Uh, they're going to have like, you know, sort of volume and that type of interest just to show you where the market and directional bias is at that point in time. <clears throat> but if you see multiple sessions doing the same thing, then you don't want to sort of fight that. But if you're in a position and you want to hold it, um, then you look at sort of other uh, sort of crypto other positions where you're going to see that they could have a sharper fall than the ones that you're holding and then you short those and so then you start to you know, use that to cover you know the loss on the other side right and then if you sort of weight those ratios you know vis-a-vis -vis the other you could use that to either manage your position so you stay what we call delta neutral or you could in some cases right if the market falls faster than it went up you could actually make enough and cover loss on the, on the initial purchase and then you could take that profit and then you put it back into your short positions and average in at a lower price so just like uh, i guess to add on to elgato there with uh, the canal platform is some things that every professional trader will look at is they'll base a strategy on full core elements now you could either be sort of well, to classify more of a technical analysis person or more based on a fundamental analysis and the core differences between those two is one uses effectively graphs and analytical techniques within the price movements or the price action the other would use uh, news sort of updates regarding that particular service or asset that you're looking into to purchase so where we're at and where we get to, and I think would absolutely improve everybody's uh, level, whether they're professional trader or amateur, is to have that nice balance. Going on to specifically <laughs> El Gato is getting at, finding that bias in the market to allow you to make the right call at the right time, and therefore yeah. it can push you in the right direction, therefore you can get those gains. But at the same time, not be too greedy, you see, <laughs> and know when to stop at that moment. And that's where strategy becomes, I would say, the number one way to go forward as opposed to method. Because yeah. as you can imagine, there will always be uh, changes as and when you go, particularly in this market, 24-7. That's why you need to maintain your discipline on the strategy. Yeah, yeah. So gonna just so let's let's say for this, if you go to your system, let's say you have your portfolio built right on your workbench, and you look for let's say like the top three or the worst performers, meaning the ones that are falling the most over what period of time, and then you evaluate those and see if you think they're going to fall more, <laughs> and then those are the ones you short, you know, while holding your long positions. So what we would always say <clears throat> is you want to probably be long and short the market all the time, anyhow. Right. So you want to basically create like a natural hedge for yourself. Right. And that gives you like a measure of control. But you have to also realize, even though you have the control, you also have double the risk. Right. Because the market can go equally 
<laughs> in either direction. So it's, it's not something you can be passive about. So this isn't something uh, <clears throat> that you can just walk away from. But what most beginning traders do is they go long only, right? So that's only like, you know, half of the trade at the end of the day, right? That's half of the opportunity that the market can provide to you. And Rocketman, you, I mean, this is your session. So you tell us like what direction you want to go. You want the fundamentals or you want to, you want, how do you want it? So I'm basically speaking in a way of my experience with crypto yeah. and what would have, the questions I can ask that would have helped me obviously um, buying high and then not knowing what to do next, I think was a big mistake of mine. I was impulsive. I didn't really have enough um, information to make informed decisions on what to do next. So the whole purpose is, is like people don't have to maybe, for example, buy Ethereum at f when it's at three thousand pound and then still have it at one thousand three hundred and have no idea what to do with it. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's perhaps kind of probably a, a good sort of initial start on you know what would support someone, at, uh, I guess, at the most fundamental level. Um, maybe let's discuss, you know, Elgato, how do you, for example, determine of when to enter the market? What, what sort of charts or news do you look at to give you an idea or concept where the bias is heading? Well, honestly, I'm a bit lazy. I really just, <laughs> I look at the, uh, I look at the screen, you know, and I just, when I see green I buy and when I see red I I mean I look at some charts and whatnot but you know the the chart structure I find for crypto is a lot different uh, from other markets and and this is you know I can say lazy but you know it's preparation right so that's that's the that's my first screen is I have my portfolio set I just see green and red I click on the chart if it's looking like it's green and the chart looks like it has a lot more upside to it I'm buying at that level um, on a limit Right. I'm not just going market on that price. I just I find a price that I like. Maybe the market will move back into it. So if it's you know, for instance, just saying random numbers, let's say if the market is trading at 103 and, you know, I, just, I don't want to rush into the market. You know, I might put it in at 102, you know, 95 or whatever, just so the market comes back to it um, and sort of creates an entry point that I feel, you know, more comfortable with but also lets me define the risk, you know, on the short side of the trade. So when you're talking about just sort of managing value on your book, uh, meaning like you know, what, what you, the assets that you have to risk, you have to sort of know going in, you know, I'm going to risk 15% on a trade. I'm going to risk 20% on the trade, which is quite a lot. But if you say working with like say less than say 5,000, um, you may need to risk that much capital, your account, in order to sort of trade through, you know, some of the anticipated volatility. So when the markets are extremely volatile, I have very wide stops. Markets are less volatile, uh, then the stops are more narrow. And I might try trade, you know, one or two more positions than I normally would, right? Because, you know, the risk is less and, and the upside a little bit greater. But normally, you know, I really try to have defined risk in, in everything that I do. So I know where I go in, I know where I come out. If I win, uh, take the money when I hit my objective <laughs> or I, I trail, trail it to a point where I'm going to protect the profit, right? Uh, but, you know, you never, you know, feel really great when the market sort of, you know, sort of claws back. <laughs> at anything. So it's, it's a little bit better. So we put, we call them OCO trades, but one's canceled on the other. So you, you probably want to set, well, you definitely want to set a stop, but you also want to like have a clear objective, you know, so that you're out of the trade. And normally for most situations, like a comfort sort of bias would be if the market goes up 2% on one side, you're out the profit. Let's say if you're going long and then you set basically your, your stop 2% on the other side. So you really don't have to sort of sit and watch and you're, you're comfortable with that, but you use, I, I really just use a system to tell me, you know, long or short, I look at the volatility, but I tend to stay away from these trades uh, where there's super high vol, you know, because yeah, I have um, more of a long-term view of the market. So this is something I'm going to be doing forever. So I don't need to catch that trade every day, so to speak.
Right. So, so just, just to put an example to what Elgato was going at, in the canal platform, for example, man, you can go to the workbench, have a look at the graph for the bullish and bearish points in terms of what Elgato was going on about in terms of how far you can stretch that trade. That's something that you can use to analyze that and determine how far is it going to go and use that as an advantage as it's a near real time data influx in there it's something that you can pay attention to constantly yeah and, and see because what happens in that situation you might catch a range it may not look significant to you when you're looking you know at it just generally but let's just say you set a tight objective but you know the markets that range is only showing you like basically 200. <laughs> so you set your exit there bam 200 you're out you didn't technically reach your objective but you don't chase the market you drop your trade right back to your old entry point if the market trades back down to that you enter again trade for the same old objective if it doesn't get there trail the stop up boom you hit your target so it's just ways to think about it just depends on what you want right from the you know from the from the market you know, it's, I would I would just ask, you know, it's like Rocket Man, like what's your what's your whole sort of uh, goal? What's your whole point and purpose, you know, for trading? So I'm still learning how to trade, but when speaking to Goodwill Hunting, he told me the benefit of trading and how you can X your money a lot more. So for me it's about learning how to trade. When initially I came in to hold like long term because i see it as a long-term investment not a tr i wasn't into trading so kind of what the benefits are of a trading long versus holding okay but so what's your reason for trading my reason for trading is to make more money more profit off what i invest in once that come rocket that's what he wants <laughs> yeah yeah so the, the main reason i i'm learning to trade is to make more on my money that's it if you understand if you understand your purpose right you know, <laughs> If, if, if you ask me, it's a two word answer every time. Make money. Make every money, time. money. Make money. money. <laughs> That's it. So, so if, if you're that, you know, if, you, if, if your purpose is that binary, then everything I'm saying to you starts to make sense. Because oh, cool. if, if anything that the system starts to show you, that any process starts to show you, that the market starts to show you, goes against that primary principle, guess what? Don't do it. This, this is really basic. This is really basic, right? But most people don't talk to you this way about the process, right? And, you know, I, I can tell you, this is really what we're here to do. We want, we want everybody to, you know, get the full benefit of the system, really sort of understand the markets educationally. But at the end of the day, we want everybody to sort of build value, you know, for themselves. But at, bottom line, Everybody's got to make money, right? You're gonna you're gonna have some losses for sure, right? That's a part of the game, right? That's why it's called investing, right? It's not called winning, right? It's just so this is this is the yeah this is that's the main that's the main concept, right? Otherwise, if you're not here for that, then there's there's <laughs> there's no reason to do it, right? There's no reason to do it. There's no reason to take the <laughs> take the risk. Also, don't get consumed with the fact that different styles of trading as well. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, everyone yeah. has uh, yeah. objectives of whether short day traders to yeah. uh, sort of medium long term swing trading, we call it, or you yeah. have your sort of uh, market leading trades, um, which could be over a course of several years. Um, this is, you know, don't don't get absorbed too much in that. Again, yeah, follow yeah. that. What's your objective and your plan, your strategy, and stick to it. Don't try and blend things too much because yeah. then that's when you get in trouble. Keep it simple. Yeah, keep it simple. See what the system should help you with. Uh, you're hearing about a lot of different sort of strategies and approaches. There's an environment within which all of those work and, and within which none of them work, right? So the goal is to get to a stage where you can start to read the market enough where you can say, okay, here's a swing trade opportunity. <laughs> and, 
and then you have a playbook for that sort of build your own algos you know so you can sort of run through like a number of different uh strategies there and know what's going on right that's that's really the point silent bob um I appreciate you've got a lot of experience around trading commodities, particularly the metals. Um, do you find that you have to change or adapt your trading style to prove your results in cryptocurrency? Or do you find actually the most f fundamental strategies apply everywhere and you don't really need to change your way? Uh, with with my former uh, trading trading strategy, I don't change the same way. I, I I trade in metals. I trade in cryptocurrency. I buy when it's I buy when everyone's panicking. Same as the metals, whenever it's panicking and selling the material, I tend to buy when it's when it's the price is shooting down, and with buy, when the price is going up, I tend to sell. The same way I use the same method in cryptocurrency and any other current any other trading strategies. I use is the same thing. So just for those that are not aware, FUD is obviously uh, fear um, and <laughs> I forgot it myself. Fear doubt. Fear, fear and doubt, doubt. Yeah. It's, it's effective. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> most people don't see that, don't see that, uh, that trend. You know, but the goal at the end of the day is to, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and, and there are fewer people on his side of the trade. So the return is going to be always a lot bigger, especially if the timing is good. And this is this is where the best values are, you know, because in those situations, people are willing to sell for almost any price, which is the best. All right, time let's, to buy. let's go for uh, quick questions. Rocket Man, sorry, can you please fire away some questions, and then we'll get it like quick questions and answers. What other methods are there other than trading for my crypto? Like what? What would you suggest? Is it is is trading the best way to make money in crypto? <laughs> well, easy, easy yes for me. Because <laughs> I, I hear that there's there's staking as well, DeFi staking that could be used. Like what what or long term holding? Like is trading the best way to make money quickly? Uh, look, there's. <laughs> That's a that's a loaded question, mate, and it's because it's there's no simple answer. It really depends on the situation uh, and how you want to approach crypto. Exactly right. So making money in crypto, there's a lot of ways to do it. But if you talked about the proof of work, proof of stake, there's a big difference between the two, right? So proof of work is like doge uh bitcoin ethereum right so you have to have some kind of infrastructure around you you know to acquire those coins and break down the blocks whereas you know proof of stake just explain it very simply you just need to put some you need to put some of your own capital or your own crypto against that and then you basically get paid you know periodically you know in that in kind you know for for that right and it depends long term like what you want to do for me it's not an either or question uh, yeah it's, it's almost for me it's an it's an interesting one for me i would yeah. probably answer that very simply of the set that you know what you want to do is you actually want to have various forms of revenue yeah. so actually all of them is a good idea to do yeah because yeah. one of them will be more long term the other will be more short term but over time you have consistent income regardless of where it comes from yeah because once you build a book right there's going to be times when you say like there may not the market may not look good to you for whatever reason right regardless of how good of algo you've designed and or you just you may just want to knock off for a bit and you say okay well you know this crypto looks interesting i can stake against this for like you know 30 35 days and i'm going to make so much against that you know for that stake um, and, and every exchange has a different sort of staking program. So you just need to pay attention to how they manage it because sometimes you stake it for a certain time, but if you don't start to claim it right back, if you don't claim it, uh, you know, in within like a certain period, then you lose some of the stake that you achieved. And so every, every exchange has their own way of doing this. 
so you just need to pay attention to those rules. But ideally, it just gives you something else to do with the capital. And it's just another way for you to generate value. Uh, now, but he said crypto, he didn't say trading. That's so he expanded that. So if you want to open that up even further, you know, and if you want to actually, you know, you know, put some investment into the business and like pick up some hardware and, you know, buy some miners and some software to run those, you know, miners and actually kind of get into that. Yeah, that's something that was done. And, you know, it's you know, like, uh, and even still, uh, I have, uh, uh, when I go get my snow tires changed, we had a mechanic, you know, he had it like, uh, it was like 2012, or whatever. He's like, yeah, man, I'm getting Bitcoins. And I was like, man, you're, I don't know about that. And I was, I wasn't into it then. <laughs> right. And, you know, he was running, I mean, he, he was running about like, uh, he had a little wall, uh, a six down in his basement. He was showing it to me. And he was really trying to convince me to kind of go in with him on it. And this is like really sort of early, you know, generations, those things can't, do more than like a few um, what i mean like a few i'm talking probably like maybe eight or nine tera hashes at this stage <laughs> right but you know for him you know he's making some bitcoin right it's probably costing him more to run it than not but you know there was a time when the complexity of the internet was low enough to where he made money before so now it's a hobby for him um a proof of work requires like a, a huge investment, you know, so if you want access to the market and an opportunity to sort of build your portfolio and then convert into like higher quality or, you know, let's say uh, crypto, then probably trading is the best route for that. Because at the end of the day, you can still define your exposure. And to an extent, you know, you determine what return you, you get from that and say probably uh, trading is, is, is the best way uh, to get to it. Um, it really just sort of depends on the investment you want to make. And then that sort of gives you more options. But combining, you know, trading with proof of stake, you could build a nice portfolio reasonably well. Yeah. How many coins do you think you should have in your portfolio? As many as possible. <laughs> yeah, possibly. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's I wouldn't, you know, in a in a in a in a crypto portfolio, I wouldn't hold any fiat. Zero. <laughs> there, there, there's no point to it. <laughs> bing bing bing. <laughs> the gloves are off now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the whole point, man. Just zero. Like it, it's 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 it's. I'm not saying it's like an all or nothing, but you know, this is where you lose, right? for no reason at all, uh, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying you're holding Doja, I don't know what your portfolio looks like. <laughs> Let's just say, right, one day, uh, you know, there's some crazy announcement from, you know, Elon and some other guys, and then Doge goes from, you know, a few bucks to like, you know, 12 grand overnight. That was your opportunity. There's no way to predict that. There's no trading that makes any sense for that to happen. But I can tell you that sort of stuff happens in crypto. And what everybody forgets is that it's a really, really, really small marketplace. Um, globally, it's small, which kind of fascinates me that so many governments and everything are so interested in it as they are, right? So I think the whole crypto market total is about 700 billion us which sounds like a big number when we say it like that but the us does 700 billion in transactions i don't know every five minutes or something like this is this is not this is not like so this is kind of like a backwater unregulated situation <laughs> which means you have a chance to, to really make unrealistic returns you know that don't have any sort of empirical or logical basis. That's why you want to keep yourself as diversified as possible, because any one of these things could go for absolutely no reason at all. That's part of it. There's a luck, there's a luck factor in it as well, right? And I think we don't talk about that part enough because there are a lot of people that were just kind of randomly doing Bitcoin 
but they got lucky too. When it ran up to 20 grand the first time, I mean, that was, that woke a lot of people up, woke me up for sure. That's interesting you say that because Goodwill, Goodwill Hunting made um, a bit of a mockery of my Doge and Shiba Inu. So it's good to hear that, as you said, that at any moment it could, at the same time, it could go down, but at the same time, it's good to have it just there. We never know. We never know. What would you say know. are the, the best projects to invest in? Aside from coin analytics <laughs> subscriptions? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Look, I think uh, going forward, you mentioned a few good ones like DeFi. Uh, that's going to be a game changer. There's a lot of blockchain technologies coming out as well. A lot of sort of stocks in the traditional markets that are going to be associated with blockchain.